Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the world of Phantom Fight. I am your host, the King Caleb Coho, and what we have today is a wonderful debut teams match. And I've brought someone back from the deep, dark crevices of TV Throwdown to come back to Phantom and host today. Hey, it's Tim Smith. How you doing, Tim? Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's good to be back. Good from the crevice there, you know, King's speech. It's very good from the crevice to be back. We'll talk later on that. But, yeah, I can't wait to see what these teams um, – it's going to be interesting to see what they bring to fandom. So it, it, it's really, it's really going to be good because I want to see what each of them brings for what they know and their knowledge and to see how well they work together. With two new teams here, it's going to be it's it's going to be good, Caleb. I love this a stuff. Absolutely, uh, I would I would echo those sentiments. Except we only know one full combination of one team. Uh, we have Viking Raiders, Matt Graham and Jacob E. West. We've seen Jacob over in the world of sports and Matt over in the world of Warzone teams. They come together to fandom teams and bring a totally new concoction to the mix. But on the other side is Mark Aiden Kamire making his debut with a mystery teammate. They're calling themselves Necronomicon. Um, I don't know who this mystery teammate is. Uh, I, I don't it, think anyone in the room knows. Yeah, could, it, could it be Bruce Campbell? It could indeed be Bruce Campbell. That is actually on the table. By the way, we're going to pull back the curtain. We also have Hillary Swank here. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, we're going to get right into prep us to hear what these guys have to say right now. Well, here we are, buddy. We're competing against somebody else. Somebody else wants to come to the raid. Well, let's give it a go. We know that we're playing Mark. Uh, somebody is lurking behind the shadows. But I think we can definitely bring the raid. Yeah, Necronomicon, that sounds like something I want to open and destroy. You know, I, I bet it's just Mark. I bet you there's no one behind that curtain. There's no one Ooh, there. That would yes. be interesting. And we will raid and pillage and destroy. So, Matt, I have one question for you. Yes, brother. Will you, will you go to war with me, brother? We will fight to the death, brother. Or die trying. I once read a book where the opening line was, In his house in Rolier, dead Cthulhu waits streaming. And while I'm not entirely sure what that means, there's a lot about the Necronomicon that I just did not understand. However, I do understand this. It's the Book of the Dead. It's the book to bring the shadows down onto the light. And that is what I am here to do. Bring the shadows down to these Viking raiders. Now, they told me I couldn't do it by myself. I was fully prepared to go at these Viking raiders by myself. They said, no, no. You have to uh, dig deep, ask around, and find a partner. And uh, it took a while. And it took convincing, but I reached down into the depths, into the shadows, into the fire, and I pulled someone out. And I have them with me here tonight, and we are going to set this match ablaze. That which is dead cannot die, and even with strange aeons, you might find something interesting hello ladies oh. and gentlemen what's going on here who is it it's me i just got off the phone with bruce campbell unfortunately mark uh he couldn't make it he asked me to fill in for you i don't have the drum line for it but i am here to whoop some fucking viking ass so let's be <laughs> like everybody ever and act afraid wait till they come into town and we'll cut their fucking throats oh ho, ho, ho. that is what i call a Sick burn. So Jay Burns of the NWA are no more. What the fuck, Tim? What is happening? I thought I was the in control. What is happening? Well, you thought wrong for one, but both very good showman teams. That wow, it's it's interesting to see Jay back with a new partner, let alone just Jay back at all with his personality. And it looks like he found somebody to meet that showmanship he knows to bring in in promos caleb uh, which i think honestly they outdo you but you know well i think that's incorrect but we'll go ahead we'll get the teams and we'll get around one we'll see what the knowledge is if the knowledge is there to back up 
those yeah. said promos. All right, we got the teams in here. We'll go right in round number one, which works like this. You're going to get 10 questions worth one point apiece from 10 different areas within the realm of fandom fights. Should you get all 10 questions correct, you'll be issued a bonus question. You're playing individually for your team, so there is no conferring. You have three repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Any questions as we get to round number one? Nope. I have one for you. Do you like what's become of this? This is what happens when you don't give me my fucking faction. Well, um, poor Richard is crying somewhere. We're going to get right to your first question, which is the category of Pixar. Who voices the villainous Charles Muntz in Up? I don't like this movie. It's just whatever. Yeah, I don't blame Best you. Picture. It's, it's Best picture? picture. Uh, no. Uh, We're going to go five, four, three, two, one. One Ben Stone. All right, we will start with uh, Jacob on this one. I completely blanked. Nothing. All right, we'll go to Mark. I think I just I just guessed Albert Finney. Is incorrect. We'll go to Matt. I couldn't get it. And Jay. Hey, look, uh, clean across the board. I said Max von Sydow, baby. <laughs> Looking for Christopher Plummer. Uh, so. No, uh, no perfect rounds here today. As we get into the second question, Tim, what is the category? Uh, your category and your question. Your category, Disney animation. And your question. In Moana, what is the name of the giant crab voiced by Jermaine Clement? You did it. You, you did, did it, baby. I forgot, my, I, forgot, right? I forgot who my co-host was for a second. I realized I gave you a question with a name in it. That was a risk. It paid off. Oh, that was actually fun, right? <laughs> you got it. You nailed it. Nailed it. All right. Wow. Well, uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll start with Jay on this one. It looks like hitting that vodka and the hooked on phonics helped him out. It's Tomatoa, baby. It is Tomatoa. We will go to Matt. That is not what I put. All right. We'll go to Mark. It roughly translates to coral. <laughs> uh, I wish. Uh, we'll go to Jacob. Uh, Y'all are all wrong. It's King Krabby McCrabberson. Uh, Kane might sue you. So Jay's the only one on the board. One nothing as we get your third question, which is in the category on the opposite side of the spectrum, Disney live action. In Pirates of the Caribbean. In Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> at World Men. <laughs> Who does Sal Fang name as his replacement to the Brethren Court? Mm, mm. Listen, Jay that. <laughs> I don't respect that uh, that uh, insinuation, sir. I haven't asked the Pirates question in many, many moons. Oh, I'm sorry, but mm, was the mm, word five, that after Disney live action four, in Pirates of the Caribbean? Three, then I was right. Shut up. Two, one, pen down. Pen Jay is up. right. All right, we will go to Jacob. Elizabeth Swan. That is correct. We will go to Mark. Elizabeth Swan. That is correct. We'll go to Matt. Damn it. And I had Elizabeth, but not Swan. We'll go to Jay. It is Elizabeth Swan. That is correct. 3 1 is to get into your fourth question. In what category, Tim? It comes in Wizarding World. And your question What is the only Harry Potter film? Not including Fantastic Beast films, Steve Close did not write. Getting into the, uh, the real world of the fake world. Yes, yes. The scene behind the scene behind the scene, so to speak. The movie within a movie has become its own movie. Are we the Five, movie? Four, I think we're the reality. Three, Abe. two, one. This ben truly is the darkest timeline. Uh, we will go to Jay first on this one. I have Prisoner of Azkaban on my board. That's incorrect. We will go to Jacob. I said the Sorcerer's Stone. That's incorrect. We will go to Mark. I also said Prisoner of Azkaban. That's incorrect. And Matt. I also said Sorcerer's Stone. Looking for Order of the Phoenix. The Order oh, of the Phoenix. No, really? Wow. That's teamwork right there. Wow. Everyone in perfect sync. God, I thought right. Wow. Your fifth question but comes. But nobody got it right, so it's true. <laughs> Your fifth question comes to the category of Marvel. These are films based on Marvel comics outside the MCU. What is the name of the Ghost Rider who rides on a horse in Ghost Rider? 
Not a good movie. No, it is not. Character or actor? Character. Oh. The character. No. <laughs> yeah, go back and change that. Well. Go five. Everyone looking a little puzzled. Four. Three. I'm puzzled that this is still considered two, a fucking movie. <laughs> one. You're not wrong. Hands down. All right, we will start with Matt on this one. The Almighty Blakeboard. Ah, incorrect. Uh, we will go to Jay. No, I think I got it wrong. I think I know it now. I said the old man. That is incorrect. We will go to Jacob. Uh, Ghost Prancer. That's incorrect. And Mark. I'm sticking with it. Sam. It's incorrect. We're looking for Carter Slade. Carter no. Slade. Sam Elliott. Oh, I can't man. stand those movies. I don't blame you. <laughs> Yeah, I had Sam Elliott written down at first. Your next category, folks, comes in the spy. We all love Bond. James Bond. Who plays James Bond in The Man with the Golden that. Gun? Giving everyone a bit of a, a reset button on the questions for round one. Just giving them a bit of a help along. Just, yeah. You got to do that from time to time, right, Caleb? Well, pick me up. Mid-round recess. Yeah. yeah. No. Go five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will start with Mark. I believe it was Roger Moore. It was Roger Moore. We will go to Matt. Holy shit, Roger Moore. That is correct. We will go to Jay. Nope. And we'll go to Jacob. Yeah, nope. Ah. All right. So four, two, as we get into your next question, which like is never a little bit closer to that lead. We're going into the category of fandom quotes. In which Star Trek film Never will you hear the it. following quote? Nobody pays any attention to you unless you swear every other word. You'll find it in all the literature of the period. It's not entirely untrue. Um, um, Caleb, I think can this you quote that? Can you broke up halfway through that. Everywhere. Uh, sure. In which Star Trek hey, Caleb, film will you, you hear the following you quote? Okay. Uh, in which Star Trek film will you hear the following quote? Nobody pays any attention to you unless you swear every other word. You'll find it in all the literature of the period. Almost, almost out of round number one. Uh, Fucking A. Almost there. This match goes fast. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. All right, we will go to Matt first on this one. Was it McCoy? Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, we will go to uh, Mark. Oh, oh, I thought. Did you want movie or the? We character? did. Want, we did want the movie. Uh, is it from Star Trek: The Motion Picture? That is incorrect. We'll go to Jacob. Oh shit. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home? That is correct. And Jay? I also have Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. That is correct. Three, uh, five to three in favor of Necronomicon as we get into your eighth question of the round. Oh, back to me. Wonderful. All right, your eighth question of the round comes in DreamWorks. Sinbad and his crew attempt to steal what at the start of the film? Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Listen, Sinbad and the Legend of the Seven Seas is a good movie. Cast somebody better than Brad Pitt. Come on. It's a fun movie. It's I, I didn't say it wasn't a bad movie. I just don't no, think Brad Pitt's no, a Are we talking about the same Sinbad, the comic Sinbad? Because that was fun. Right? Okay, listen. That's disrespectful to my childhood. It's an Five, underrated movie. Four. Thank you, Jerry. Three, two, one. Pens down. We will start with Jacob. Uh, it's our hearts, but our ruby? As incorrect, we'll go to Mark. I don't know, the Holy Grail. Uh, that would have been more interesting, but incorrect. We'll go to Matt. How about a ship? As incorrect, and Jay. Uh, context clues. I said the Golden Fleece. It's incorrect. Looking for the Book of Peace. It rhymed, but it's not the right answer. <laughs> All right, your pet ultimate question comes to the category of the MCU. What two actors have primarily portrayed Howard Stark in the MCU movies. You can see where Tony gets it from. Yes, you can. Uh, 
absolutely uh, great character. Love him. Damn right. Go five. Four, one, four, three, two, one. Heads down. All right, we'll start with Matt on this one. No, I only got one of them. All right, uh, we will go to Mark. It is John Slattery and Dominic Cooper. That is correct. We will go to Jacob. No, blanked again. And Jay. John Slattery, Dominic Cooper. That Boom. is correct. A big point I game. Dominic Cooper Dominic. could not pull his last. <laughs> could not pull right. his last one. We're going to give them their last question of the round. All right, your last question comes in everyone's favorite category, the worlds of DC. Who plays Thomas Wayne in Batman v Superman? The death of a movie. How um, I dare don't you. believe I don't believe that is the correct subtitle. Should be. Um, <sighs> that movie was a mess. That is true. Not but I enjoyed that mess. <laughs> yeah, enjoyed that mess. Okay, that's sad when that's the bar we have to compare. Okay, to. Listen, this is a this is a bad franchise. Or suicide. Good, good movies in it. Five, yeah. four, three. Repeat Two. the question. All right, that is the first repeat for Viking Raiders. All right, the question the is, question. who plays Thomas Wayne in Batman v Superman? I'm sorry, I forgot. The first one was a technical. I, was, I wasn't trying to be a dick, legitimately. No, you're yeah. good. Man, Dave um, Burns staying on the ball there. He's, good. he's looking to keep uh, the game honest. But, uh, yeah. We were already honest. He was the one that it was being uh, dishonest. Hey, at least I called myself on it. You're true. Five. <laughs> so who's Four. more honest? Three. The honest, dishonest Two. person who's being honest? One. <laughs> we will go to Matt first. Does that repeat help him? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That is correct. He rears his head. Uh, <laughs> Jay Burns. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Shout out, Nico. That is correct. Uh, we'll go to Jacob. Damn right, it, Jay. You stole my wrong. joke. <laughs> I I blanked. Call me Nico, I guess. And Mark. Negan himself, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, I remember when Nico didn't know who Negan was. I just that's my favorite match ever. Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, but at the end of round number one, Necronomicon is Wait, only with nine. Fuck? Okay, somebody needs Sorry. to off camera tell me about that story. I will I will tell you about my greatest personal victory in life later. But at the end of round number one, uh, Necronomicon is in the lead with nine Vikings Raiders tra Viking Raiders travel with four. Uh, trail with four as we get into round number two, which works I, like this. I might be wrong, but I have us at five. No, uh, I also have it at four. Uh, you have us at four? Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. I so, just suck at counting. Uh, don't worry, I suck at math, so I could have just yeah. as easily been wrong. Um <laughs> All right, so at the end of round number one, Necronomicon is in the lead with nine. Viking Raiders travel with four, but anything can happen as we get in round number two, which is the wheel round, and it works like this. You're each going to get a chance to spin from the lovely wheel from wheeldecide.com. If you like the category you land on, you are going to get five questions worth two points apiece. You can opt to multiple choice, but a DVL is the point down to being only worth one. You can spin again, but you are stuck with whatever you land on the second time. Your categories on the wheel tonight are MCU, Wizarding World, Worlds of DC, Disney Animation, DreamWorks Animation, Jurassic Park, Pixar and James Bond, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. Uh, Necronomicon, you're in the lead. Would you like to go first or defer to Viking Raiders? You want to put the pressure on? Let's do it. Put the pressure. All right, on. we're going first. All right, so your spin at the wheel is away, and it lands on Disney Animation. Would you like to keep it or spin again? You want to go one more again? Yeah, one more again. Let's All press right. that luck, baby. You are stuck <laughs> with the category of Jurassic Park. All right. Okay. Um, Tim, you want to give them their questions in the category of Jurassic Park? With pleasure. All right, gentlemen. Your questions in Jurassic Park. The first one in Jurassic World: Who cameos as an instructional or in an instructional video in the Taurus Ball? Who cameos? Is that is that Jimmy Fallon? Sounds right. Fuck it, Jimmy Fallon. Final answer. That is correct. Two big points. All right, gentlemen, your second question. They don't do final answer here, Doug. We, oh, do, okay, do, we do final answer, yeah. Yeah, we they do, do final they answer. Do That's do what I was waiting on when he said final yeah. answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, your second question. What year saw the release of Jurassic Park 3? 
Ooh, Lordy. I want to say it's 2001. One or 90, two. I want to say it's 2001 because it's 93, 97. Uh-huh. It, it's like a four-year cycle. Right. Uh, well, you know me. I'm good with it if you're good with it. 2001. Final answer. That is correct for two more points. They are sweeping so far. Can they keep it up with the third question? In the Lost World Jurassic Park, what dinosaur do Ian and the team encounter when they find Sarah? It was a Stegosaurus, wasn't it? No. No. They said in the Lost World. Yeah. Remember, because they come upon the, the little baby, and then the mama shows up and starts swinging the tail. And Oh, you're right. Uh, you're right. That's where they find Sarah. So she's, like, messing with the – unless right. there was a dinosaur before that. No, because I don't think it's the baby T-Rex. So, no, no, it's definitely I'm, not. I'm, I'm, so I'm you with, cool? with this. Yeah, right. yeah. Stegosaurus, final answer. That is correct. Two more points. All right. Your fourth question. What kind of dino do Alan and Ellie find the fossilized remains of at the start of Jurassic Park? Oh, it's a velociraptor. velociraptor. Final answer. Mm. Correct. Two more points. And your last one for a clean sweep. Who directed Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Oh, uh, is it J.A. Bayona? It is J.A. Bayona. Final answer. They are on fire, folks. Clean sweep. 10 oh. out of 10 possible points. Clean sweep. Puts them up to 19 and puts Viking Raiders in a dangerous knockout position. They need to get some points as we bring back the wheel and dress parks off the table. Viking, your spin is away and it lands on the category of Jurassic Parks. That is a free, free spin. spin. Free. Oh, I want that one. James Bond, would you like to keep it or spin again? Spin that again. Yeah. All right, and you are stuck with the category of Wizarding World. <laughs> Wizarding World. All right. I so. want to challenge that. That's right on the line. We should pick which one. <laughs> Your first question in the Wizarding World, round one. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, when Harry breaks his arm playing Quidditch, Lockhart says he can fix the break, but actually does what? It destroys all his bones. He uh, he casts a spell, and instead of breaking it, he he basically dissolves all his bones. Right? Final answer. That is correct for two points. All right. Your second question in Wizarding World. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, what is the name of the item that allows Harry to breathe underwater during the second task? Gillyweed, final answer. Is correct for two more points. They're working their way back. Your third question in The Wizarding World. How many Harry Potter films feature the actor Richard Harris? Uh, what are you thinking on that, Matt? Um... Honestly, I'm not sure. Let's go multiple choice. Okay. All right. Your multiple choice options are A1. Final answer. A1, B2, C4, or D7? I was thinking two. Okay. Let's go with it then. I was thinking two. Uh, uh, B, final answer. That is correct for one point. Your fourth question in the Wizarding World. What is the full name of the woman that Nagini disguises herself as in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1? Oh, shit. That sneaky snake. Mm. I think I know her name, but multiple choice. Just be on the safe side. All right. Your options are A, Ramilda Vane. B. Batilda Bagshot, C. Bellatrix Lestrange, or D. Nymphadora Tonks? Mm. Did any of those sound sound familiar? Yeah, I'm stuck between A or B, and I'm not sure which. Okay. Five. Uh, can you repeat the, the options again? I can do that. Is it A. Ramil Devane? B. Batilda Bagshot, C. Bellatrix Lestrange, or D. Nymphadora Tonks? 
I'm going to go just shot in the dark. A final answer. It's the build incorrect. a bag shot final build answer. Bag shot. That is correct for a one point steal. Fuck! Author of the history of magic. Yep. All right. And your last question in Wizarding World, a must hit to avoid the knockout. In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which beast has a fondness for gold? Oh, fuck, man. Is it a... What, do, you, do you have an idea of what it is? Uh, my, I my first thought is, what are you thinking? My first thought's Pixie. Three, two. Repeat the question. Right, uh, repeat the question. First, or second repeat. In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which beast has a fondness for gold? Let's just go multiple choice to be on the safe yeah. side. Okay. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, Bow Truckle, B, Demi Guys, C, Mertlap, or D, Niffler. I'm glad we didn't go with my gut. Niffler, final answer. That is correct for one point. And to stay in the game, avoid the knockout. The score is 20 to 10 as we get into round number three, which is the betting round. It works like this. We are going to give you the category. You are going to tell us who will be taking the question for your team and how many points you'd like to bet between zero and two points. If we get the question right, you will gain those points. If you get the question wrong, you will lose those points. We go until someone is mathematically eliminated or the score reaches zero. How it works with teams is on the first question, you tell us who will take it. The other person has to take the second one. On the third question, you can redistribute who takes three and four. And on the fifth and final question, you can confer should we get there. Any questions as we get into round number three? No. All right. Then your first category that you can bet points on is fandom quotes. Who will be taking it and how many points? Just, But we need you to write and show it to us. Mm. So don't yeah. Mark, we'll jump yeah. yeah. Matt, how are you feeling on quotes? What are you thinking? I I, I think I can so. maybe. I mean, are you feeling confident in it? Or? Go ahead. Okay. You know what to bet. Nah, uh, hit, hit, miss. Go uh, ahead. Yeah. I'd just go with one from, to be on the safe side. How many? Four. Hold up. Hold up. So I think we have to go. Time, sorry, what, Jay? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt Jacob, but since they took all that time and I wasn't trying to interrupt because I know no, that you're Matt... good. You're good. We are not counting you down on conferring on teams. You have oh, time. Okay. Yeah, no, you're good. Don't feel rushed. <laughs> just as long as it doesn't take us like all year or something. Sorry about the power that. of editing. You're good, dude. I know you have a, I know you're shitty. I know you have a kind of a shitty connection right now. Don't stress. Uh, Mark, you know you know what to do, right? Uh, how many do you think? Uh, come on, son. <laughs> okay. All right. So, who is taking it for Viking? I am. All right, Jacob. And, and who is taking it for Necronomicon? Mark. Mark. Perfect. All right, so go ahead and write down how many points you'd like to bet between zero and two points. Give you a second. All right, and we will get bets starting with Jacob. Uh, we have to go two. All right, and uh, Mark? Going for broke, two. Okay, and your question in Phantom Quotes in which MCU film will you hear Robert Downey Jr. say, it's good to be back? Can you emote more, Caleb? I need more. I can't emote more because it might give away information. And that's something I can't I do. Need more, I need more cowbell. Give me more. Listen, I can't do cowbell, okay? It's, I, last time I cowbelled, I hurt myself. Five. Five. Four. <laughs> three. Two. <laughs> One, pens down. We will start with uh, Mark. It was going to be one of us. He says it in Iron Man 2. And we'll go to Jacob. I said Iron Man 3. It is Iron Man 2. Oh, it's now 22 to 8. Our next category comes in Star Trek. It's great to be back, Jay. It's great to be back. I miss you, buddy. I know. Where the hell you were, you just. Tim, you just messed it up. You should have said it's good to be back. It was literally the last question. 
right. Uh, bite me, Caleb. <sighs> Did you say he, fight me or bite me? That was what I was bite about to say. Me. Bite me. Well, don't threaten Caleb with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will get bets in five, four, three, two, one, starting with Jay. You should have known better than to show your fucking face around. You know, it's uh, zero, obviously. Uh, and Matt. A goddamn thing about Star Trek, apparently. One. Okay. And your question in Star Trek comes from the Star Trek man himself, Tim Smith. That's right. And your question, what is the subtitle for the second Star Trek film to feature Jean-Luc Picard and his crew? This is a big uh, must hit just for yes. uh, Viking Raiders. Must hit. You cool if I use a repeat? Yeah, go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will start repeat with. Repeat the question. We will start with J. Uh, insurrection. Uh, and Matt. Now I I tried to get the repeat in. I didn't get it. And your winner. Yeah, that's it. Necronomicon. The answer was first contact. What a match, Tim. Oh my god. I was it, writing that too. That was an incredible, incredible match, Caleb. I mean, Necronomicon just came on strong, especially in round two, and they really set the pace for it. I mean, Viking Raiders did their best, but I mean, Necronomicon is just on point for this uh, match. Absolutely, uh, Jay and Mark just proved that they're a really strong team. They just uh, they just kind of put the rest of the Geek League on notice. Twenty two points in a debut is really insane. Yeah. Uh, so that's the team that is that we're gonna want to keep an eye on for the rest <laughs> of the season. Um, but we'll go ahead. We'll get some post match interviews starting with our uh, winners today. The uh, the Necronomicon, Mark and Jay. So my first question is, Jay, what the fuck happened to Richard? And um, good job on your win today. But what's going on, guys? Mr. Carefree got a phone call, decided that he could do better without me. And uh, I think that this match proved that that is not the case. He got a little bit of a conflated head when he almost beat Maggie. Uh, he definitely got one after he beat Jeremy the Adam Adams. Um I still love the kid. Uh, all I'm looking for is an apology. But uh, as for the Viking Raiders, uh, I will say this, Mark, we gave them a blood eagle and it put the entire league on notice. Let's not play this game. We're here to burn shit down and we are bringing the madness, the fire and the flames. Give me my next team and coho. Give me my faction. Uh, I don't know well, what more uh, you have to do to get this thing going. It's well, almost as um, if Coho has something against you, Jay, or me, or, you know, anybody who uh, he deems to be a threat to it's his It's almost affection. as if he's afraid. Um, mm. I, I smell a conspiracy. Not, uh, not about uh, fear here. It's about paperwork uh, that you did not turn in on time. So uh, that's mm. on you. Um, but in the digital age, paperwork was a problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, but... Necronomicon, you do win. You move forward in our sort of rookie pool bracket thing. Um, is there any of these upcoming teams that you're worried about? I do know uh, w which two teams you have the potential to face next. Um, you did a great job here today. Is there any teams that you're looking to play long term before I uh, give you an, op an ultimatum? Give me the name of those. Give me the names of those two teams, and we will tell you which one we would like to put on the altar. Um. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I don't know what happened to you, Jay. You got really creepy. Um, but you know what? Uh, you uh, will either be playing the Dark Knights, uh, Ruben Colon and uh, uh, James Spence, or Parcel Mouse, which is Eli McKegg and Ed Sale. Uh, those are the two teams that you have the potential of facing next. Which one would you rather play? How are you feeling? <laughs> I don't know about you, Jay, but uh, <laughs> the, these uh, people that call themselves the Dark Knights, that's hilarious. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the Dark Knights would be uh, the next up on our list of uh, our list of names to take uh, take them all down. What about you, Jay? What, how do you feel about that? 
repeat those names. Give me those names so we can tell you which one we want to put on the altar. Uh, the Dark Knights, uh, James Spence and Ruben Cohen, uh, or uh, Parcel Mouse, Ed Sale, and Eli McKegg. It's very heavy breathing. I didn't realize the you were in ASMR. Easier road to victory would probably be the first team, but I don't think that Eli can match our crazy and Ed Sale's okay in Middle Earth and Harry Potter. That's all he's got going for him. Um, Give me parcel mouths. I'd love to kill me somebody who can talk to a snake. Um, Well, that was creepy. Um, Maybe you're crazy and Eli's crazy would be fun to watch, but um, we will see what we can do. If they win, that's who you're playing. So uh, we'll see about that. Uh, But congratulations on your win. We will see you guys uh, later this season. We will go to our unfortunate losers today, uh, Viking Raiders. Uh, it just didn't quite go your way today. Uh, the wheel didn't really like you. Round three and betting didn't really like you. Internet didn't really like you. How do you feel? Ah, a little, little irritated. Uh, we definitely wanted to come out um, with a stronger performance. Um, but, Matt, we have to behave uh, because Coho will suspend us if we're not. So... Uh, let's keep keep everything keep everything kind of kind of low. Uh, not be as creepy as Jay because um, that was intimidating. But uh, I mean, if we would have known who we were playing against, I think we would have done better. Uh, definitely not knowing Jay was there, uh, just finding out last second. That was uh, that was BS. Uh... But can I? Can I complain about the level the level of difficulties with these questions? Because I work for someone, so it might as well work for me too. Ah, lovely. Um, <laughs> but uh, you guys did play a, a solid um, match. I, I just, yeah. uh, Go ahead, Matt. Uh, for for Wizarding World not being my strength, one of my weaknesses, I have to say that I pulled something out of my ass. Uh, round three, we should have swapped. I knew I, I knew his right off the bat, and I was writing for his contact, and I tried to get the repeat in, but you know, shit happens. Uh, mm -hmm. It fucking is. I knew yours right off the bat too, so trading those would have definitely helped. But you know what? It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys didn't play a bad game by any stretch. Um, in fact, now uh, now knowing that Wizarding World was not a strength of yours, you guys going four for five in it is incredible. Um, is there any team that you're looking to play coming off this loss? Maybe try and get that first win. I don't give a fuck. Bring me anybody. As long uh, yeah. as long as it is the new British Empire, so we can raid. Uh, and pillage, and destroy yeah, them. He's, yeah, he's got a hard on for Brooklyn. Well, uh, Brooklyn uh, probably has a hard on for you too. It might be a reciprocated boner between the two of you. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe if uh, if you two will uh, will face off at some point. Who knows? But that's going to do it uh, for us. Congratulations. Or not congratulations, but congratulations on a solid performance despite coming out with a loss. Uh, we'll go ahead. We'll bring back Tim. We will uh, wrap this one up. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Any final thoughts before we get out of here? Jay went dark. And uh, I don't know what apparently happened. your mini you has a boner for uh, the new British Empire, it looks like. Mini me? How's he mini yeah. me? He can grow a glorious beard and I'm stuck with nothing. <laughs> just persona wise but you know it's okay interesting yeah uh but I, you know what i've always thought that scene seeing him just uh it just seems like a mini you but a good match regardless i mean viking raiders they tried but jay and and mark i believe it was necronomicon was just on point they they tore through they're going to put a lot of rookie teams on notice and probably a lot of veteran teams watching out for them i mean you are a veteran team with you and your partner Jim. I mean, That's that was an impressive start. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta think. Absolutely, um, but you know what? That's good for us. We have another rookie team uh, on the one and one war path uh, in this little rookie bracket to end out the season. Um, but for everyone here, that has been Jay, who is now Eli. That has been Mark. Uh, that has been Matt. That has been Jacob. That has been Tim, and I have been Caleb. And this has been Phantom Fight Teams. We will see you guys next week with another great match.